Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. In this video, I'm going to look at the week starting on Monday, February the 5th, 2024. And this week runs through until Sunday, February the 11th, 2024. So let me give you an idea about the structure of this video. I'm going to start off by looking at um, the planets this week. I'm going to um, describe what I see as being the main astrological events. And uh, these, of course, the main astrological events, in my opinion, and I will describe how these events, how these aspects between the planets um, are likely to affect um, our lives and the world in general. Of course, I must make it clear, how likely to affect in my opinion. Um, so I will go through what I regard as being the main things going on. Um, probably the new moon on... Um, Friday, uh, Friday, February the 9th, is probably the main thing going on. That's probably the main event. Um, but there are other things to consider. You know, Thursday, we see sun, the sun making a square to Uranus. And in fact, that sun-Uranus square is very tied in um, with the new moon. So, you know, arguably it's, it's um, um, a single configuration, you know, the sun and the moon coming to a conjunction in the new moon but it's also they're also square um, Uranus um, another aspect to consider is um, Saturn quintile Uranus two outer planets moving to to, you know, to, a, to an aspect of 72 degrees to each other you know 72 degrees a fifth of a circle could be important um, so having looked at the overall planetary picture um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some famous people and consider how today's, um, sorry, how this week's astrology might impact their lives with particular reference to the um, to the new moon, which is square Uranus. Um, you know, one of those people is Elon Musk. That's why um, I've got his picture up there on the thumbnail. I'm I think there's some maybe something going on, but you know just because you see um, an astrological event going on doesn't mean we're going to hear about it. Um, you know, yes, you might see um, you know the new moon square Uranus impacting Elon Musk's chart, for example. But are you ever going to find out how it how it actually hit him? I mean, even if it does hit him, are we? Is he going to tell the world about it? Um, possibly not, and it may be something to do with his private life, which um, um, the outside world never finds never finds out about. Um, so bear that in mind when you're listening to my forecasts um, concerning famous people. Well, it's not actually all famous people. I do actually look at um, an event today, and that event is the inauguration of Joe Biden, uh, because I think the uh, new moon square Uranus might. Um, have an impact on it. So having looked at the, these famous people, um, I'm going to turn my attention away from astrology and look at the week from the perspective of the I Ching. So, you know, I've cast an I Ching, um, a, a, a couple of I Ching hexagrams um, using coins. And um, I look at the hexagrams from f four perspectives, from a general perspective, from a perspective of money, from a perspective of career and business, and from a perspective of um, relationships. So that's that's the video. So let's, uh, let's start off by looking at the astrology of this week. Um, so here, here we are. Um, said top right that is um, Elon Musk um, now on Monday first thing that happens is that uh, 
Mercury moves into Aquarius. And that is an important sign change, um, though we should bear in mind that uh, Mercury's rulership does not change. So when Mercury was moving through Capricorn, it was moving through a sign ruled by Saturn. It then moved into Aquarius, and Aquarius is also ruled by Saturn. So um, there is still something very Saturnine about the nature of Mercury. Um, nonetheless, um, Capricorn and Aquarius, although they are both ruled by Capric by Saturn, they are very different signs. You know, Capricorn is an Earth sign. Aquarius is an air sign. Um, so, um, you know, that means there is a difference. Capricorn is more about money and material stuff. Aquarius is more about ideas. Um, so, you know, there is, there is a bit of a change. And also Aquarius is more positive than Capricorn. Um, it's more about um, what we can do to change things. Um, and in this light, we just have to remember, as I've said before, Aquarius is not really a sign about happy freedom, doing what we like, um, feeling idealistic, optimistic, all that kind of stuff about Aquarius. It's, it's not really true, actually, in most cases. You know, Aquarius is is very much connected with fascism and totalitarianism, um, the power of the state, um, the state wanting to to, to control us, um, perhaps using technology. And yet we've already got Pluto moving into Aquarius. Now Mercury is joining Pluto in Aquarius and there is a Mercury-Pluto conjunction. Um, now, I'm not saying Aquarius is um, a bad sign. A a Aquarius can be about um, innovation. Um, it can be about independent-mindedness. Um, it can be about detachment. And I think that with Mercury moving into Aquarius, you know, many of us are going to have some brilliant ideas. They, m they might actually be quite original. Um, you know, Capricorn can sometimes find it difficult to be original, but Aquarius, originality is a very important thing for Aquarius. Doing things differently. Um, and just being detached from the wider world. And that detachment allows us to think independently. Um, so that is certainly the positive aspect of Mercury moving into Aquarius. Um, but it is conjunct Pluto. Um, now, Mercury conjunct Pluto on Monday, um, okay, it could be about deep, penetrating thought. Um, it might be about um, understanding things. Uh, in a new way, um, and it might just be about being interested in sort of new technology. Um, so some of us might feel it's time to buy something new. I don't know what you know, new phone, new computer, some gadget. That's that's what that's the kind of stuff that Mercury and Aquarius likes. Um, but Mercury Pluto contacts can often be connected with propaganda. Um, trying to be manipulative. Um, it can be the government trying to be manipulative. The government um, messaging its, its people and saying, this is the way it is. Believe us. You can believe us. Trust us. And again, using technology perhaps to spread that message. Um, and yeah, being manipulative and sort of on a personal level, we might experience um, not just manipulation, but perhaps gaslighting. I mean, Mercury-Pluto is, is good at gaslighting. Um, you know, gaslighting is about persuading someone that, for example, their cognitions are wrong, uh, that you have got it wrong, uh, that your mental processes are somewhat faulty. Um, what you think you've seen, you haven't seen. Um, 
what appears obvious to you is not actually true. That's that's gaslighting, at least in terms of my understanding of the word gaslighting. Um, so watch out for that. Um, though some of us might uh, decide to be the one doing the gaslighting. Some of us might want to be the propagandist. Um, if if you're that kind of person, yeah, we can be very persuasive. Um, we can persuade people that two plus two equals five, um, if that's important. Um, but that is a power um, that uh, we mustn't abuse. Um, so be careful about that. Um, so as we move through the week, we start to get another aspect. We get a quintile aspect between Saturn and Uranus. Um, so, you know, here is, um, here is Saturn in six, six, seven Pisces. There's Uranus at 19 Taurus. So Saturn and Uranus are um, 72 degrees apart. And 72 is, degrees is one-fifth of the circle. So you think of a cake and you cut that cake into five equal slices. Um, they will be each, each slice will be 72 degrees. So what would that mean, Saturn, Quintile, um, Uranus? Um, it's quite a collective thing. I'm not necessarily saying it's going to be personal, um, but uh, there's going to be an attempt to create tension and urgency. And that may be part of the propaganda. People telling us that something's got to give, we're, you know, we're being persuaded that... Uh, it's a, it's a dangerous situation. Um, governments may sound nervous. Governments are trying to make us nervous. Um, you, know, it's, you know, Saturn is about restriction. Uranus is about um, rebellion. And we're trying to sort of bring these forces together and sort of create, uh, create some kind of style. You know, we are uh, being told that... Um, we have to rebel against the restrictions. There is some outside force prevent, preventing us from doing what we have to do, and we have to make a big show of rebelling. Um, and I suppose you know that might be you know that might be the um, you know the urban revolutionary, um, the revolution in really perhaps it doesn't actually do anything, but likes to create a style of being a revolutionary. Yeah, there are a lot of people who want to want to make a big impression of showing how tense they are, how difficult it is, how the world is falling apart, and we have to do something. Um, so be aware of that, and it might seem a bit pressing, but there is that style there trying to deliberately make us all tense. Um, so, you know, do consider that um, with this Saturn-Uranus um, quintile. Um, then on Thursday, um, we get a sextile between Mars and Neptune. Um, I, I don't think that aspect is a particularly big deal. Um, Mars sextile Neptune, um, you know, some of us can apply our energy in a sort of roundabout kind of way. It's a reminder that, uh, you know, if we want to get results, we don't necessarily have to be direct. We can get results sometimes by um, a bit of subterfuge, a bit of deception, um, approaching a problem in a rather sideways uh, manner, um, and not perhaps not telling people what we're really going to do, um, using sort of some gentle lies you know that's that's how it, that's how it works this um this mars sextile neptune but at the same time as mars is sextile neptune the sun is square uranus there you can see it the sun is at 1552 um uh um aquarius wait well, it's 1552 aquarius at the beginning of the week um but by th by Thursday, it will have moved to 19 degrees, tor 19 degrees Aquarius, and then it will make that exact sun square Uranus. And so with sun square Uranus, um, we might find that some people are really willful. They want to get their way, and they don't care how they do it. Um, 
and people can you know be really stubborn and obnoxious and um, things might get broken as people try to get their way um, I mean I suppose the sun square Uranus could in certain situations lead to accidents because it might encourage certain people to be too hasty to be too dramatic um, and in the process you know they they lose control of the situation and you know things um, things can go wrong now the sun square Uranus the sun square Uranus aspect happens just before a um, new moon um, so in a way that that um, uh, that new moon is really tied up with the sun square Uranus I mean let me just show you what I mean um, so uh, Here's the new moon. Uh, I've said it for Westminster in England. In other words, Westminster being a part of London. Um, so here's the sun. Uh, here's 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 the new moon um, at uh, twenty forty one Aquarius, and you can see that it's square Uranus. So the new moon is square Uranus, and that does that does create a certain amount of instability. Um, this new moon. Um, I mean, I'll just come back to the new moon. I just want to point out that um, on um, on Saturday, um, uh, Mercury is square Jupiter. Um, Mercury square Jupiter. Uh, Mercury in Aquarius square Jupiter in Taurus. That can mean a lot of talking, a lot of thinking. Um, and it may be um, a clash of ideas. You know, Mercury in Aquarius is about brand new ideas. And Jupiter is about um, a different set of ideas, perhaps a more traditional idea, a, a set of ideas. And so you perhaps get the image of two people communicating. Um, one person being new and revolutionary, uh, the other person being more staid and trying to trying to see advancement in terms of a traditional context. And there may be a disagreement there. There may be an argument there. Um, but, uh, you know, in general, Mercury square Jupiter is just probably a lot of talking and a lot of thinking. But going back to this new moon. So this is a chart of a new moon um, set, set for London. Um, you can see... Um, yeah, but it's but it is square Uranus, and so if you've got a new moon square Uranus, Uranus, um, then yeah, you might get um, some genuine um, instability um, in in some places uh, more than others. Um, so yeah, I would have said it's potentially um, quite a quite a difficult um, new moon, uh, you know, because because Uranus is. Um, because Uranus is tied up with it, um, so that's um, that's something to consider. Um, and um, another thing, uh, um, another thing about this new moon um, is, uh, you know, that uh, certainly set for London. You can see that you've got Pluto on the IC. So from if you're in London. Uh, Pluto is on the IC, so um, this very um, deepest and most private part of the chart. So in London, um, with Pluto conjunct the IC, there could be um, a certain feeling that things may be like about to boil over. I mean, Pluto is a very powerful force, but it doesn't advertise its presence. It's something buried. Um, but it's there anyway. Um, and so perhaps this is talking about the social and political tensions um, within UK society. And this, with this new moon, may really start to bring them out um, into the open. Um, so, you know, it could be quite difficult. And it, it doesn't affect just, just the UK. It affects... Um, it affects uh, France. Let me just show you what I mean. Um, uh, so, if we cre if if I create a map uh, of the world, um, 
you see this line here, this red line here goes through London, goes through Western France, goes through um, Algeria, goes through, yeah, goes through Western Africa. That's that, those are all the points where Pluto is on the IC, and so that's that. That, you know, that might those, those might be places to um, to consider. Uh, yeah, I mean London. Is an obvious thing because you know I think there is a lot of dissatisfaction in London, and so something might boil over, something might come to light. I, you know, things have been coming to light um, in, Engl in, in England, in the UK in general. Um, you know, we just had that the post office scandal where um, uh, these uh, uh, postmasters were people running these. Uh, Post offices were um, unjustly accused of stealing money uh, or, mis or mis mislaying money, and some of them went to prison. And that was something that had been trying to come out into the open for a long time. It finally did come over, come out into the open. I think thanks to some TV drama. Um, but maybe there's more stuff coming out into the open in the UK with Pluto on the IC um, at the time of this new moon. Um, we will have to see. Um, in terms of Ukraine, uh, we should always, I suppose, consider that. How does this um, new moon affect Ukraine? So, at the time of Ukraine, you, uh, uh, sorry, at the time of a new moon, um, we can um, we can see something going on in northern Ukraine. I'm not saying anything is going to happen, uh, but uh, let's um, let's just set up a map of Ukraine here. Uh, uh, okay, there we go. So this is Ukraine. So this is um, this is where Saturn is. This is not. This is this is where Saturn is on the descendant on that red line, and this is this is where Uranus is on the. Um, um, sorry, this is where Saturn is on the IC. And this is where Uranus is on a descendant. And remember that Saturn and Uranus um, are quintile each other. So theoretically, you can map out this point in Ukraine, um, uh, which is sort of east, there's Kiev, it's sort of east of Kiev. Um, and that line is sort of Sumy, northern, northern, U northern Ukraine, close to the Russian border. I don't know. Maybe that particular area is going to be a flashpoint. Um, who knows? But maybe we shouldn't be so precise about it. Um, I think it's just s suggesting that, uh, yeah, this part of Ukraine, um, northern Ukraine, um, there could be something going on with with that new moon, um, but uh, I must say that you know astrocartography can be something. Uh, this is this is called astrocartography. Astro means like the stars. Cartography is obviously about mapping. Um, so this is a sort of theoretical point that I've that I'm highlighting. Um, but yeah, astrocartography can be quite hit and miss. Um, so that's the picture um, this week. Um, I think it's the new, the new moon square Uranus is um, uh, is the thing I think that uh, really matters um, this week. I think that is the most important event. Okay, so now let's consider some people and one event. Um, that might be influenced by what's going on astrologically. So here is a horoscope for Biden's inauguration as president, um, which happened on January the 20th, 2021. So at the time he was inaugurated president, um, firstly, um, the sun is just in has just gone into Aquarius, um, so uh, you know the the sun is in the first degree of Aquarius always during times of the inauguration because the inauguration happens pretty much on the same day um, every every four years. 
But this time round, you have got a Mercury-Pluto conjunction on the Biden regime's um, sun. And I do think that might be a big deal. Um, it's, I th suspect, about the regime really trying to stay in control. Um, you know, trying to keep a firm grip on government. Um, and maybe, you know, with Mercury-Pluto conjunction, I was talking about propaganda. We're going to get a lot of propaganda um, out of the White House, I think, and out of the American government um, in particular. Um, they're really going to be trying to push a certain message in order to try to get their way. Um, and, you know, you've, you've got an, an unstable world. Um, you've got um, uh, these attacks that have been started taking place around the Middle East um, in retaliation for those three American soldiers that were killed in that camp, I believe, in Jordan, although some people claim it took place in Syria. Uh, of course, don't forget that there are American troops in Syria. They, it is essentially an illegal presence. Um, but... Uh, there is, there is, yeah, there is the messaging. And I think um, America is really going to, the American government, the Biden regime is really going to be trying to put out a particular message. Um, but with Pluto on the United States' sun, remember the sun in the inauguration shot is arguably um, Joe Biden himself. And so Pluto on the sun might be indicative of an overwhelmed president, a president trying to deal with really heavy forces, heavy things going on that, uh, yeah, he can't quite cope with. And while this is going on, um, we have got this new moon um, in Aquarius, which is right on... Um, Mercury. So this this new moon. Okay, it's not exactly there, uh, but this new moon. What around twenty four twenty 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 one um, Aquarius is conjunct uh, the regime's um, Mercury, um, and also you, the planet Uranus is is square Uranus. Is so you've got a new moon conjunct Mercury, and you have got the sun, and you've got Uranus at. Um, 19 Taurus, 1920 Taurus, squaring Mercury. Um, so that Mercury is under pressure. So I think there's a lot of frantic thinking and communicating going on. And I think there's a lot of nervousness um, this week um, in the White House. Um, I mean, I'm suspecting that nervousness is more connected with external events, Middle East, Ukraine, perhaps somewhere else. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the Biden regime could be impacted by um, what, what's um, what's going on. Um, um, another person who might be impacted is not just Joe Biden's regime, but also perhaps um, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. So Hunter Biden um, has got uh, his Venus at uh, 18 Aquarius. So... Venus can represent uh, his various relationships, women in his life. They can also have a financial impact. Um, notice that the Venus is in the ninth house there. Of course, the ninth house is the house of higher courts. And so, yeah, he's got a new moon on his Venus and he's got Uranus square his Venus. So some, something about that Venus might be, might be stirred up this week. Um, I don't know how his relationships with women are going to be. I'm, I don't know what his relationship is going to be like, perhaps with female lawyers, Venus in the ninth house. Um, so, yeah, we might be wanting to watch um, Hunter Biden. Um, then someone else, um, our favorite uh, financier, um, George Soros. George Soros, born August the 12th, 1930. Uh, we don't know what time he was born, so I've gone for his noon chart. Um, obviously, he was born in Budapest. Um, so, George Soros has his son at 19 Leo, um, assuming he's born at midday, which, of course, he wasn't born in midday. But still, he's got his, he's got his son around um, 19 Leo. So, we have got a new moon 
opposition his son and we have got Uranus square his son. So that configuration might put George Soros under pressure. Um, there may be, you know, something he has to deal with. Um, um, of course, um, he's born in 1930, so he's getting on, isn't he? I mean, how old is he now? He's going to be 94 this year. Um, so, uh, yeah, George Soros needs to look after himself this week. Um, he doesn't want to, you know, he shouldn't trouble himself about things going on, you know, around the world, for example. You know, I know George Soros does get concerned um, about, uh, for example, what happens in Eastern Europe, what happens in in Russia, Ukraine, um, even in the United States. Um, um, the George Soros, I think, organization, I believe they, you know, they fund candidates and so forth. So there's a lot of pressure for George Soros there. And I, I do think, uh, you know, his, the sun is a life force. And so with Uranus square, his son, um, this um, new moon um, opposition, his son. Yeah, he needs to watch out. He needs to be careful how he goes. He shouldn't stress himself out. Um, so that's that's him. Someone else. Uh, oh, Tom Cruise. I know nothing about Tom Cruise, um, but I suppose I should point out that uh, Tom Cruise has his Venus at 19 Leo. Uh, so the the new moon is opposition his Venus and um, Uranus is square his Venus. Um, I don't know what Tom Cruise is doing. Probably, perhaps, if anything is happening, something to do with his personal life, you know, something to do with the women in his life. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll probably never know. But I thought I'd just um, point that out anyway. Um, then uh, I know a lot of people um, think that Vivek Ramaswamy is is wonderful. Um, of course, uh, he, he's pulled out of a race, hasn't he? I mean, he's now accepted that um, Donald Trump is the man. And Vivek Ramaswamy, who I, I think has quite a high opinion of himself, um, he has um, a Sun-Mercury conjunction, uh, square Saturn, and this configuration is hit. I mean, the new moon is opposition, his Sun-Mercury conjunction. Um, and it's square his sa square his Saturn, and he's got Uranus opposition his Saturn. So maybe this is a new beginning for Vivek Ramaswamy. Maybe he's going to want to want to get want to take some new initiative. But there's going to be a certain tension there. I think I think Vivek Ramaswamy will be feeling quite tense this week. Um, you know, so tense that he might feel he has to do something. Though maybe. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy will perhaps have to recognise that there's something he'd like to do that he can't do. Um, but uh, uh, perhaps we need to watch him and watch what he's announcing and uh, how he is conducting himself in public. Or maybe this just event is just something completely private and uh, we will never know anything about it. Um, so we talked about George Soros um, uh who is, remember George Soros was born on August the 12th. Then there's Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen is the uh, United States Treasury Secretary, born on August the 13th, 1946. So because she's born on August the 14th, 1936, you know, her son is at 2017 um, Leo. Um, so the new moon is opposition, her son, and she's got Uranus square, her son. Um who knows what she's picking up on you know maybe she's she, maybe she's picking up on stuff to do going on in the economy um something bothering her um now interesting thing about janet yellen is that uh, i just noticed that she's actually got no planets in water signs um you know i would have a concern here maybe with janet yellen is that uh, maybe she's not particularly sensitive to what's going on in the economy you know in the american economy i mean you should be able to feel it, shouldn't you? It's not just a data thing. You know, the, the Federal Reserve talk about data-driven decisions. Um, 
data, just data. You can you is that what it's all about? You kind of need to have a feel for what's going on, and um, maybe Janet Yellen is a little too data driven. Um, maybe she's not really picking up on it. Maybe there's a certain insensitivity with Janet Yellen um, that is making it difficult for her to make the right decisions um, regarding um, regarding the American economy. But there may be news, something happening which um, uh, puts a cloud on perhaps economic progressions or something like that. Although it just might affect the men in her life. Um, something completely personal might have nothing to do with America, might have nothing to do um, with the um, economy. Um, someone else who's affected uh, is Julian Assange. Um, Julian Assange, he is uh, born July the 3rd, 1971. Um, there's his Mars. Mars is at uh, 21 Aqu Aquarius. So, Julian Assange has this new moon, um, conjunct his Mars. Um, he's got Uranus square his Mars. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe there's maybe some legal news for Julian Assange, but I think he's going to be quite tense. Uh, this new moon is perhaps a new beginning, but it is on his Mars. Um, he may feel that him or his supporters um, have to sort of assert themselves in a new way. Uh, need to perhaps create some new initiative. Um, so I haven't really, I'm sorry, I haven't really been following a Julian Assange case, but uh, I know it's all about stopping him being um, extradited to the US because um, that hasn't happened yet, I don't believe. And so there may be some new initiative he can do. Uh, you know, the Mars is conjunct the North Node and the new moon is hitting that. So perhaps that's something to do. Maybe he can spring a surprise or maybe it's him that will be on the receiving end um, of a surprise. Now, on this uh, uh, um, the thumbnail, I've got a picture of Elon Musk. Um, and uh, there's certainly some stuff going on with um, Elon Musk. Um, so Elon Musk has his Mars at 2054 um, Aquarius. He's actually got conjunct... His, his Mars is in the same position as uh, Julian Assange's Mars. Um, that Mars is making a sesquiquadrate aspect to the Sun. It's actually quite a close sesquiquadrate. There's, there's his Sun and there's his Mars. Um... 135 degrees apart, uh, sun and the Sun and Mars. This is someone who is assertive, um, but also can be spoiling for a fight. I mean, I don't mean that necessarily in, in, in a physical way, but someone who in who who has sort of a um, bit of um, attitude hostile, someone who is spoiling for a fight. Um, who can get himself involved with big arguments, and that's that's the potential of um, Sun sesquiquadrate Mars. Now, if you are into hypothetical planets, um, I, there's something very interesting going on with Hades. Uh, so let's just throw in the hypotheticals. Um, so Hades, oh, where's Hades gone? Um, there's Hades. You can tell Hades because it's just a little cross. It's like a little cemetery symbol. Um, so he has actually got Mars semi-square, Mars square Hades. And um, Hades is 45 degrees from his sun. Uh, so I think with Elon Musk, there is a darkness there. There is a dark side to his personality. Uh, there's a certain attraction perhaps on his part for, you know, for for things that are sort of underhand and maybe a little shady. And um, it, it's all about the excitement, the intrigue and the adventure. Um, so that's his horoscope. Um, you know, remember, I think it's Alan Leo said, character is destiny. You have to work out what the horoscope is saying first before you kind of look at the you look at the transits. So just remember where Hades is, 20 Taurus. I'm going to get, I don't want the chart to be too cluttered. Um, so the the new moon on 
on um, uh, on Friday is exactly conjunct his Mars. Uh, it really is exactly conjunct his Mars. And also we've got, you know, that, that new moon is not going to just be conjunct his Mars. It's going to be Sesu Quadrate, his sun. Likewise with Uranus. He's got Uranus, um, you know, 19... Uh, 19 Taurus is going to be square is going to be square his sun and I think widely semi sorry square his Mars and widely semi square his sun so this uh, the new moon square Uranus is going to be impacting um, the part of Elon Musk's horoscope um, that is assertive that is aggressive can be impulsive um, so I think we might hear from Elon Musk this week. He might just do something a little, a little surprising, a little hasty. Um, but I would advise Elon Musk to be a little careful. Um, you know, impulsive behavior on his part could be dangerous, I would have said. And so I would have said that he, he probably needs to you know, try to sort of keep a, um, a low profile. Uh, will he? Probably not. Uh, finally, I want to talk about our friend Vladimir Zelensky and his wife. Um, so I've talked about Vladimir Zelensky quite recently. Um, you know, what I said about Zelensky, um, the last time I referred to him is I pointed out that he had, um, a full moon on his birthday. As his birthday was, um, January the, um, uh it was january the uh 25th that's his birthday so it was a full moon right across um in other words that that full moon was hitting his sun venus conjunction um that's the first point secondly he had, pluto goes into aquarius so pluto went opposition his mars now I was incredibly negative about this, and I still am, but I think we're starting to see how this is manifesting um my understanding about what is going on in Ukraine is that there is a power struggle going on um, between Zelensky on one hand um, and um, one of his, his top one of his top generals, um, uh, Zeluzny, I think it's Valery Zeluzny. Um, and Zelensky wants to get rid of Valery Zeluzny and Zeluzny is, uh, doesn't want to be got rid of. He doesn't want to resign. Um, and the talk at the moment is that uh, Zeluzny is absolutely on the verge of being sacked, and but that has sort of implications. And this is Zelensky trying to assert himself. So, you know, that is Pluto's opposition, his Mars. So a lot of action here. Um, I mean, and it's true that this... Um, um, this um, um, this um this new moon remember this new moon is uh just a reminder this new moon is at uh yeah 2041 aquarius um so going back to uh zelensky's chart um this new moon is right on is right on his mid heaven so for vladimir zelensky this is a really important new moon and this new moon is square Uranus. And um, so, um, you know, anything can happen. This is, this is, a, this is the past struggle developing. Um, and your new moon, okay, you could be positive about it. Oh, well, this is a new beginning for him. A new the president is going to be able to assert himself in sort of new ways. Um, this is a new beginning for his presidency because he's got rid of, Zelen of Zeluzny, uh, assuming Zeluzny eventually goes. I, the latest, is, you know, the, but it was all com complete, com you know, so much going on. You know, Victoria Newland, um, the dep I think she's a de deputy um, secretary of state. She visited Kiev because there was a big, you know, I think she was trying to work, sort out this, this dispute. Uh, that's one view between Zelensky and Zeluzny and probably a dispute between all the all the people below them. But so you've probably got, um, yeah, a real power struggle here. And so with um, with a new moon on his midheaven square, his if it was if it was just a new moon on his midheaven, I think one could one 
could perhaps be positive. But when you when you throw in Uranus as well, Uranus is beginning to square his Uran- his midheaven. I think this uh, this is whole this is looking really difficult um, for him, and I I don't believe this new moon is going to be particularly positive um, for him. Um, I think it may be what finally breaks the thing. Um, now. Um, as far as his wife is concerned, um, I don't have a time of birth for his wife. Uh, she was born very close to him, actually. He was born uh, January the 25th, 1978, and she was born February the 6th, uh, if I got that right. Yeah. Um, so this affects her because um, the the new moon is on her Venus, and Uranus is squaring her Sun Venus midpoint. Um, uh, in, indeed, she's got Uranus square the Sun, and so we've actually got Sun square the. So that might be important because you know she's got Uranus square the Sun. So that is possibly saying something about the men in her life, and uh, that sh- for sure it's got to be Zelensky. It's got to be her husband. So she's got that anyway. But now, this week, you've got Sun square Uranus in the sky. So that does affect her chart and it probably does affect her man as well. So she, I would have thought that uh, Elena Zalenska is really picking up on this all. And I would guess that she's under a certain amount of stress. Um, you know, these are these are difficult times. Um, so uh, that's that's what's going on in her chart. Um, and uh, I think the sun you're in a square, because it picks up on her sun you're in a square, uh, very close, relatively close in terms of degrees. So um, maybe we can get an idea about what's going on for Zelensky by looking at what's going on in terms of um, his wife. So um, those are a few, you know, few people um who I think could be impacted um, by um, by the astrology. So it'll be interesting to see what happens um, over the week. Um, though I should make out point out that when you when you get hit by a new moon, it doesn't necessarily affect you, affect you straight away. It can affect you a couple of weeks later. It just starts. It, you have the beginning of a period where you know where the new moon can start to uh, can start to do stuff. It's not not always just a day to uh, a one day wonder okay so um that's the astrology and so i now want to look at the week ahead from a perspective of um the i ching um so um i want to give you my sort of usual reminder uh, that um y- you are not obliged to have this I Ching reading. Um, this I Ching reading only has an impact on you if you are watching. If you are watching me do the reading, if you become part of a reading, if you don't want to be part of a reading, then you can stop the video now and do something else, and it's just going to have. It, it'll be irrelevant to you. So I'm just giving you an opportunity to to get out. Um, um, to get out of this video if that's if that's what you want okay so um i asked the question um you know what is this week this week starting on um, february the 5th monday february the 5th 2024 uh you know what is it going to be like for people watching the the eating section um of this um video um and just just a reminder that i i'm looking at this um, I Ching from from four perspectives: a general perspective, perspective of money, uh, from a perspective of career and um, business, and finally from the perspective of um, relationships. So the first hexagram I threw was um, this innocence. What that means is. Um, we shouldn't expect things. You know, that's always the way, isn't it? Um, if something good happens to us, it very often happens when we're just not expecting it, or even when it give, when we've given up on it. Um, 
if we're obsessed with something, we keep thinking about it, then that's very often a sign that it's just not going to happen. So what we need to try to do is to just cultivate this innocence over the week. We shouldn't have any clear ideas about what is going to happen. Um, we should just sort of live for the present um, okay, we've still got to be a bit careful. We're not, I mean, living for a presence, we can't entirely do that. But um, but our thought processes should ideally be in the present. We shouldn't be thinking about the future and thinking thinking obsessively about the future, thinking about what might happen in the future, getting excited about the future. We should just relax. And then, sure enough, we will get something probably something just the thing we wanted but we mustn't we mustn't expect it we must cast it um from our mind i think it was um i think it was alistair crowley when he, alistair crowley was talking about um magic he said that the one thing that can really destroy your magic is the lust for result so we must not have a lust for result um we should um um, be innocent um, now there is a moving line here um, third line moves and um, this third line um, I think I've had this third line quite recently and it's a kind of quite an unfair third line um, the, this third line is telling us that um if we plan for the future, if we are not innocent, we start thinking about the future, um, we start planning for the future, then we could lose everything. <laughs> all our plans, what we're trying to do, it'll all come to nothing. Um, on the other hand, if we just have, have an open mind, um, if we expect nothing, we plan for nothing, then we get everything. So it's kind of unfair because, you know, you, in a way, if you plan for the future, you should be rewarded for planning for the future. But not in this situation, because our plans, our planning for the future is almost second guessing the future. We're telling, we're kind of telling the future how it's going to work out. And of course, the future doesn't always think like that. The future doesn't, in fact, the future doesn't like to be treated like that. You know, treat the future like a person. You know, that's disrespectful to tell the future how it's going to manifest. Um, and so if we start preparing for the future and assuming the future is going to work out in a particular way, um, we could be um, disappointed. Now, um, because we've got a moving line, um, we get a different hexagram and it's a very different theme perhaps um, 13 fellowship with men uh, must make it clear in this context men is just people I'm not I do not want to want to suggest that fellowship with men has it has anything um, gendered about it it's just people in general um, so fellowship with men um, you know, we we have no expectations. We should have no expectations. And because of that, um, we can meet up with people. There are, you know, people who can, people can make us, make us um, in, stronger. And it does seem um, that we're going to be more effective in a team rather than as um, individuals. Um, so that is... Um, you know, that's certainly something we need to um, bear in mind. Um, you know, perhaps you know, you know, perhaps the underlying spontaneity that we had in the previous hexagram of of innocence. You know, because if we're spontaneous, then we are easier to deal with, and it's easier to link up with people. It's easier to uh, to link up with people who can help us out. And so this fellowship with men um, is, is a key component of um, making sense um, of the situation. OK, so let's now look at the I Ching from the perspective of um, money. So are you expecting money? 
are you assuming that the check is in the post? Um, uh, if you're expecting money or expecting something to give you someone, someone to give you money, um, then try not to think about it too much, because you know if you think about it too much, you're almost delaying the money although probably what's really happening is that when you're thinking about money too much it's just a sign um, that the money is not going to materialize um, now that doesn't mean you have to be um, careless uh, you know yeah sure if money is owed to you that is a serious business so yeah you've got to respect the fact that money has, is owed to you or money should be coming your way for whatever reason but at the same time You've got to be innocent. You've got to stop thinking about the money that is supposed to be coming your way. You'd like to come your way, and just be, um, just be more relaxed about it. Don't have any expectations. Um, so that's, I think that's that is going to be um, important. Now, this third line, move the moving third line. Um, you know, I have to be careful what I say here, um, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not. This is not about giving investment advice. Um, it's, it's a situation where if you, you know, if, if you think that you can plan for the future, uh, at least in the short term, by spending money, um, then yes, it might go might go wrong. Now, of course. There are ways of spending money in terms of planning for the, for the future, which are obviously completely safe, aren't they? I mean, if you put it in, I don't know, um, well, I'm not going to go into details, but there are some way, ways, of, some ways are safer than others. But I th think there's a temptation to spend money without thinking on what you think is going to make you safer and more secure because you're thinking about the future and somehow expenditure in that kind of way may not work out and the suggestion is then that a better approach would be to say oh you don't know what's going to happen right now is a time of uncertainty and so it might be a bad idea to spend money on particular things and particular products when you are in this time of uncertainty. It will be better to wait until the situation has um, resolved itself. Um, and yes, with money, obviously don't think too much about it. Um, don't get obsessed about that check that's supposed to be in the post. It, it will, if it's owed to you, I think it will come your way in its own own good time. And the more innocent, if you're not thinking about it, not worrying about it, that might be a, a, a sure sign that things are starting to move. Um, then we get this. When then we get the third line moves, and so we we come to a um, a different hexagram, and. Uh, I think the suggestion here um, that, uh, you know, in terms of money um, and, you know, trying to bring in extra money, um, you know, you shouldn't regard yourself as um, being alone. You can get help from other people. You can get cooperation from other people. Um, and, you know, in certain situations, this, this might be, uh, you know, might be something where you have to have to have to share money. You know, fellowship with men. You know, if if everyone's working on a on a project on a on a particular uh, project, then you know there could be um, you know then um, it's going to be more effective, and there'll be money money all round. Um, so yes, so don't just don't exclude um, the social dimension. I, I think if if money is your priority, then um, getting advice, working in a team. Um, getting cooperation from others um, is is probably um, the way to do it. Um, and you know, if you're perhaps if you're afraid of asking for money, maybe someone can act as an agent or uh, someone who can act as a go-between, something like that. Again, um, fellowship um, with men. Okay, let's now move to um, career. 
Now, of course, this kind of depends where you are, what your situation is with career. Um, um, you're certainly expecting something. Um, are you expecting a job? Are you expecting a promotion? Are you expecting uh, that you can get a new contract if you run your own business? Um, the advice here is not to, you know, not to sort of second guess what is going to happen next. You've, it seems that, you know, you've probably done some work in the past. You've tried your best to sort of make yourself known. And, you know, it's a time now where you perhaps have to have to just wait and sort of innocently, innocent, you know, with innocence, not have any expectations about timing. Um, you know, you, 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 you put in the work and now you're just waiting for the results. Um, um, so uh, if, for example, you've applied for a job or you've applied for a new business and you're waiting for a, re a, re a result, then probably what you shouldn't do is ring someone up and bother them say you know have you made up your mind what do, what about the contract are you ready to sign it this kind of thing um if you bother people um that might not help in fact you might get a negative reaction um although you, it depends on the situation just remember this is this is a youtube video it's I Ching. this is this is purely for entertainment purposes just just a reminder there um um, and also be careful about how much preparation you put in, because if you prepare too much for something, um, let's say, let's say, for example, you're expecting, assuming is going to be new business. And let's say you decide you need to buy equipment or if you go, if you're expecting to be given an interview and you, I don't know, buy a new suit or spending money on something because you're spending money because you're expecting something. You decide what's going to happen. You spend money on it, um, uh, maybe quite a lot of money. But uh, as they say, you may be jumping the gun and that might not be the right thing to do. It's, it's kind of going against the spirit of the hexagram. You need to have an open mind about what's going to happen next. Have, you know, there are many ways of responding and uh, just have some innocence. Um, if you're innocence, if you just say, well, well I'll, I'll see what comes up now. That's that, that's that's kind of attracting good luck. Um, surprising as that might sound, because too much preparation um, could actually um, cause damage. Um kill the magic um even um but anyway this um this hexagram does move um it moves to uh fellowship with men um whatever you're doing uh in terms of career and business if possible um you should be doing it in a team uh you you know you're not the lone ranger here you don't have to be the lone ranger um you can um you can work with people um it's it's the right thing to do um may not be what you want to do um but with fellowship with men you can really benefit um from working in a team so um if you're looking for a job maybe there are people who can help you find a job um if you're if you've got a job really try to talk to your workmates um get some feedback um and uh that way that way you'll make um, you'll make good progress you know you don't need to think about yourself and your ego that's not what it's about um what you want is to be successful and to be having a favorable impact and fellowship with men Again, must make it must make it clear. I'm not talking about anything um, anything gendered here. Fellowship with people, other people, colleagues, gender isn't irrelevant here. Um, that that I think um, is um, the way forward. And finally, um, there is um, relationships. 
um, relationships um, is something that, uh, yeah, people people do ask astrologers a lot about. And of course, this is the I Ching, but um, and it's it's always difficult, isn't it? Because people do have so many expectations as far as relationships are concerned. It's just I don't know. It's just human nature. Um, I mean, obviously, that's particularly in terms of romantic relationships, and I'm not just talking about relate romantic relationships, but you know, when it comes to love and romance, high level of expectation. So if you're coming into this question with a romantic question, with where, where romance is an issue, then expectations is a sure, if you've got a lot of expectations, then that's a sure sign that things aren't going to work. Um, if you want things to happen, you need to have complete innocence. You must have no expectations. Um, you mustn't even be thinking about it. Because, you know, that is the way to get um, romantic success. Um, and in general, when dealing with people, um, don't make assumptions about how they're going to behave. Uh, because you don't know. Um, you, you cannot get inside someone else's mind. You don't know how they're going to behave. You're just guessing. Um, and there's always some danger that if you do have heavy, ex high expectations on someone's in terms of their behaviour, that your expectations um, may be may feel like a like a straitjacket. The other person will feel those expectations, and they'll feel that being they're hemmed in, and then of course they might just run away. Um, so yeah, don't have expectations. And if you're planning something, if you're involved in a relationship with someone, and you're planning how the relationship is going to develop. Those plans are really not going to help. The the plans are just going to be are going to really um, make things turn out very badly. Just just have an open mind. Just don't don't um, don't have any um, expectations. That's that's just really important. And this moves to fellowship with men. Um, uh, I mean, I I think it looks like if your relationships your are if you've got a, a relationship question, um, this fellowship with men is not. Although fellowship with men is not, it's not a specifically romantic hexagram. Um, it does suggest that uh, relationships can actually have a um, a favourable result because it's about fellowship. It is about social connections, um, and so relationships can um can certainly work um if you're looking for new relationships then perhaps there's a hint there that you need to you know you need to socialize you need to be in a situation where there are lots of people around you and when you're in that kind of situation you meet lots of different people and then you might find the right person um but uh you know overall i think in the context of relationships 13 is a favourable hexagram, and I think, with reference to the previous hexagram, it's just having a lack of expectations, not planning anything, just having being an open, having an open mind. Then I think that open mind can encourage the universe to um, give you what you want um, in terms of um, relationships. Okay, uh, that's it. Um, it. It looks like. Uh, the I Ching is kind of suggesting that it may not be such a bad week. Um, you know, I know I've talked about when in terms of the astrology, um, I was, you know, talking about, um, uh, you know, this new moon square Uranus, and perhaps I was uh, making it um, sound a bit difficult, a bit uh, dramatic. Um, but uh, the I Ching is saying, well, you can get what you're looking for, but just don't have expectations. Uh, why should you have any expectations? If you have expectations, you're preventing things from happening. Just take things one second at a time. Uh, 
don't have any preconceptions about what is going to happen next. And in that way, uh, you will be attracting um, good fortune. OK, that's uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you found this uh, video uh, um, interesting or useful, um, I'd be grateful if you were to like it, if you're not subscribed. Um, yeah, feel free, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is um, a link um, in the description. So, so yeah, thanks again for listening. And I will talk to you again very soon.